Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today we have a tutorial on elbows. We're going to be talking about different methods of throwing them. We're going to be talking about how you can set them up to make sure that you actually have a chance of landing. You're not just throwing against somebody's guard. We're going to talk about defensive aspects because as you throw an elbow, if you can land it, that means your opponent can land it. We have so many things to cover. I'm happy you're here. Let's get this started. So today's tutorial is sort of a beginner to intermediate skill level. For somebody who's super advanced, you can run through this, but you're going to want some more after, some more information. We're not covering that today. Let's start off and let's go through just a couple of the basic elbow options which we have. This is not as simple as just going, okay, I'm going to throw a punch and I come straight down the middle. We have some more options that we want to add in. So first off, we're going to talk about an elbow which comes horizontal across. When we're throwing an elbow, I want you to think very closely about your hook. Think of the motion of a hook. When you come up, you lift your elbow slightly, you rotate your body, you land with the knuckle. An elbow is quite similar to that motion when you go hook and then I throw my elbow. The big difference is I'm not extending my arm outwards. I don't have that distance that's beyond 90 degree angle between my forearm and sort of the bicep tricep. I keep this fist very close. So now as I do this same rotation, instead of having my arm extended and landing with the fist, I come in and I land with this area. Now many of you are probably wondering right off, well that's great Gabriel, what part of my, my elbow, my forearm, should I be landing with? Because you're going to see many people when they're fighting land all the way from here right down to the tip. If you're looking to cut somebody, right in here is going to be an ideal spot because your arm is going to sail through and you're going to have a good chance of splitting open that skin. But you will see people land with the lower portion of the forearm. As we start going higher and higher, it's going to get softer and softer. So I would say try to aim for either the elbow or about two, three inches up the forearm. That's going to be the ideal spot which can generate the most force, therefore the most damage. So we're talking about this horizontal elbow, comparing it to a hook, going, okay, they're fairly similar. There's not too much difference aside from the fact that I'm keeping this arm fairly tucked in. Once we get that initial motion down, we understand, okay, the rotation is the same. Then we can start going into, oh, what are other options for the elbow? It doesn't just need to be coming across. I could additionally come upwards. This allows me to split up my opponent's guard in between the arms if they're holding them right here. I just do a simple raise off either side and I come right between their arms. I could also, if they're keeping a really low guard and I feel like, oh, I can't come with the horizontal and get high enough, I can drop downwards. I get that elbow up really high and then I drop down, elbow up fairly high and drop downwards. These are really sneaky. So we have Basically, three options on our angles. We come up, we come across, or we drop downwards. If you connect your hands to somebody's guard, lifting the elbow up and dropping down is a very good way to land on somebody. So that basic idea there should allow you now to sort of flow from one elbow to the next, keeping everything really loose. You can double up off the same arm. And that's when we start seeing people who can get really deadly with these when they start rotating from one to the other. It's not just punches into elbows or just straight stepping forward into an elbow. They'll come one, two, three, maybe an exit. One, two, three, maybe an exit. Very dangerous. But from here, I wanna talk a little bit about closing distance. How do I get to my opponent safely without potentially eating an elbow or a punch on the way in? My favorite way to do this is not to step forward and go straight into my elbow. It's to actually lead with a punch, keep that punch out there almost as a probing device. And then as I step forward, I can go right into my elbow strike. I can do this off the right arm as well. Maybe I finish with a cross, then I step forward, keep this arm out and then hit them. The advantage of this, as opposed to going one re-chamber two, is the person is blinded. They're blinded because I'm not giving them that, okay, there, now you can see, here comes the elbow. I go here and then I step 
and that arm is always out in their face, so it makes it very difficult to see the elbow following the punch. Of course, there are many, many other ways to land elbows, to set it up, to close that distance, but this is my favorite. And in my experience of sparring with elbow pads and playing around with it, it seems to work really well, especially this rising elbow up the middle because you hit somebody, they close their guard, but there's still that space to sneak that elbow right up to the jaw or up to the eye. And you can get really fancy with this kind of stuff. You don't need to just go, okay, one to two. You could do something like, oh, jab, cross, jab, stick it, and then into the elbow, or jab, hook, cross, into the elbow. And you might decide, oh, I don't wanna come upwards. Maybe the top of the head's open. Jab, cross, cross, dropping over top. Lots and lots of options on these elbows. Now we need to keep in mind that just like anything, when we throw a punch, we keep our hand up. We do this because as we land on somebody, that means they can land on us. With elbows though, if I'm coming up the middle, there's a good chance they might come up the middle as well. So we wanna be aware that our hand to the side is not always the best position. Maybe when I step forward, I go, okay, I'm gonna put my hand just slightly across my face to protect, or I'll go palm out. If I come off the other side, I could come right to here. Giving myself that extra protection so that I'm not getting that shot, that potential counter elbow landing on me. Just make that small tweak between when you throw your punches and you just keep your hands to their side, this is what most beginners do, to now think, okay, I'm coming with elbows just a little bit more up the front of the face. But when I throw punches, I don't like to just keep my hands to the side. I like to be able to twist this hand across my face occasionally so that if a straight punch comes as I'm throwing a straight punch, I am protected. Now, when you're shadow boxing at home, or you're trying these things out at the gym. Let's talk about whether you should be passing through and when you do pass your arm through what the follow-up is, as opposed to just hitting and controlling. If you have a target there, you can just hit and pull straight back, that's great. But when you don't have it, it ends up kind of feeling a little bit awkward to do that stop, as opposed to that little follow-through. So once we get to here and we pass through, Make sure your shoulder stays high so you have some protection as opposed to coming down low and exposing everything. We don't want this at the end. We just keep a little bit tighter here and then I can get right back down. On the rising ones, straight up, straight back because I have this hand there to give me that protection. On the dropping ones, again, same. Don't go too down low. Keep that elbow, this shoulder fairly tight so that you're not exposing yourself too much. Now catching angles on elbows can be very beneficial because if we just stand square with somebody and we just step straight forward and throw our horizontal elbow and their hands are here, there's a good chance it's just gonna land off their guard. But if I turn sideways, you see that there's an opening beyond. So maybe I throw my jab, I take a little step forward, I've cut that angle and now I come across and get behind the ear, to that ear area. And I could do this in a number of ways. It could be jab, cross, I take that little step with one of those punches, boom, boom, and then I cut across to the side. Great options if you're trying to make sure that you don't wanna just stay square in front of somebody. If you're doing your rising elbows, we're pushing forward, but then maybe following up with that short little angle. And of course, everybody wants to do the spinning elbows. The spinning elbows are fun. I would start with the basics. The things that I just showed you, rising, the horizontal, the drop, get those down really well so you feel like everything's flowing, you're keeping your shoulders high, you're protecting yourself. But then if you wanna get into the spinning ones, because everything's feeling good, you absolutely can. Hands are up. Again, we have options on how we're gonna go about doing this in terms of angle. I could take my little step to allow me to complete my rotation and I could come horizontal across. In addition, I could come dropping downwards. I could even come up on an angle. I wouldn't utilize that one very often, but they are all options. Take a little step across. This could be done when we're in tight, or it could be done when there's more of a distance. You disguise something to blind them. One, you take a step forward to close that distance, and then you shoot across to that spinning elbow. On this one, because we're coming with the opposite side, we're not landing with up here, we're coming this direction, we wanna be very careful that we time it, we get that correct distance, and we are gonna land with the very small little inch 
below the elbow, if not right on the elbow, because anything up here is gonna do so little damage. And keep in mind that if you've watched UFC, maybe you've watched Muay Thai fights, you'll see people get creative with other little options within elbows. It doesn't always need to be this or this or this. You could do things like drop the arm and come in and poke. They're not gonna have the same force. You're not gonna most likely knock somebody out with something like that, but you can cut them and you can create little insecurities in their mind on all the little odd things you might throw. These are tricky, mean weapons. And if you can get them down, you can really create some serious damage. Let's talk about one more setup, which I like to utilize when I'm doing my training. It's almost me bringing my hand across and grabbing my partner's or my opponent's arm. If I'm here, maybe I came with a jab, I see them up really tight, I'm gonna reach across and I'm gonna hook my glove right onto their upper arm, might be right to their glove. Once I've done that, I can pull down. Once I've pulled down, now I've opened up the head and I can slide that elbow right across. Could be one, two, reach, grab, pull across, elbow. Could be me just throwing a hook. Once I throw my hook and they block it, I clasp onto their hand, one, and then I open it, I grab, and then I pull across, and then I elbow. These are little tricky moves which you can do, which will really open up the head, and you won't have to spend as much time looking for the opening, you create the opening. One, two, grab, pull across hook, pull, come across. Beautiful setups. And then of course we can start getting into some nice ways of closing distance, utilizing the legs. If you can get somebody to start catching front kicks, throw a couple front kicks at them, they start trying to catch, you slide forward and hit them in the face with that short little elbow. One, two. One, two. Fantastic little setups. If you're a UFC fan, and you've seen some of the better strikers in the organization, you'll note that they start letting those elbows fly and when they do, it can really throw off the opponent. They're dangerous, they're fast, they're hard to see coming, and they're hard to block. So I really advise everybody to start adding them into your shadow boxing, not just hands all the time. Mix those hands into the elbows. Try things like spinning around, coming through with some fancy other techniques where you hit and hit. It's gonna be fun and you're gonna get a lot more dangerous. You just have to be extra careful that if you do throw these in sparring, you're super controlled and generally not doing it without elbow protection. So let's call it everybody. Thank you for joining me today. I'll see you guys back here soon for another video.